Hi, welcome to the Crafts Channel. My name's Corinne Brad, and today I'd like to show you how to make a very simple self-lined fold-over clutch. And it's the kind of thing that you can use to make little tiny snap purses, like this, fully lined. Or you can change the shape and the size of it. You can make things like pencil cases that I've lined with some oil cloth so that if your ink leaks, it doesn't spoil your fabric or even a little lunch bag with a Velcro closure so you can pop your kids' sandwiches in there and an apple. And it's very easy to make, no mucking about with linings. What you need to do is you need two pieces of fabric that are the same size. Now I've got a piece of fabric here, which is a nice Amy Butler print, and this is about 45 centimetres by about 30. And then I've also got the lining well, actually, no, this isn't going to be the lining. This is going to be the outer with a nice bright lining. Uh, and I've, self, I've, I've quilted this fabric myself. It's very easy to do that. You just get plain fabric, two ounce quilt backing, pin it together and just run loads of parallel lines of stitching. You need to put these two pieces of fabric right sides together and pin them at the corners like so. And then you need to decide how long you want your flap to be. So I want this clutch to be, let's have a look, about 15 centimetres there with a 10 centimetre flap. So if you get a couple of pins and mark, um, typically this mat doesn't actually start at zero, it starts at three for some peculiar reason. If you mark, I'm just going to mark 11 centimetres from one edge. And this is where gridded cutting mats are invaluable because you can easily do parallel lines. And I'm going to sew the flap from those pin marks all the way around the top to that pin mark. I'm going to set my machine back to a two millimeter stitch, just a straight stitch with a five mil seam allowance. A couple of back stitches to all. Oh, don't run over your pins. This is what happens when you run over your pins. You either break your needle or you bend your pin. Round to the top. Make sure your needle is in the fabric before you lift the presser foot to pivot it to do the next side. Otherwise it will just fall all over the place. To this corner. I'm just going to take this pin out so I don't make the same mistake I did before and then sew down to the other pin that was 11 centimetres from the edge of the fabric scissors would help oh they're hidden by my fabric that's why so you've sewn the flap of your bag and then before you do anything else, you need to sew the bottom edge. Like so. Oh, pin there. So what you've got now is you've got your flap here. And where the seam has stopped on the flap here and the bottom seam of the bag is, you want to open it up so you you have like a, a triangle shape. I don't know if you can see that like that. Just put a pin mark. Carefully, you know, line up these seams so they're nice and accurate. And pin it on this side. Turn it round and again, line up your seams. Mm -hmm. 
like so. Oh, that's the bent pin that I ran over with the uh, sewing machine. And I'm going to sew the outer of the bag, first of all, down to those pins. Again, same way, 5 mil seam allowance, a couple of locking stitches. And you want to stop sewing just at the intersection of that bottom flap. Same with this side, in fact, actually. Let's just take that pin out a minute. It's a lot easier to sew down to an intersection than it is to start at the intersection because especially with most presser feet, you can't actually see where the back of it is. But as you're coming forward, you will be able to see here where that intersection is and stop just before it. So that has formed the outer of your bag. And then do the same with the lining. The reason you can't do this in one fell swoop is because you've got this flap that's sitting here and if you try and do it in one fell swoop you're going to end up getting it caught up in your stitching. So you need to do it in two halves, but it doesn't really save or, or take an awful lot more time. There's that one. And then when you do the other side, what you need to bear in mind is at some point you need to turn your fabric the right way out. So you need to leave a gap in this lining, which I will do. And I'll leave the gap there. And then just start again about five, six centimeters away from it. And so back to the intersection. So there you have your three-part bag. You think, well, how on earth is that going to be a clutch? It's really very easy. If you pop your hand inside the gap and grab a corner of the flap, now due to my stupidity and forgetting that I was actually using quilted fabric, which is a little bit thicker than normal, I have left myself a very tight gap for turning. So at some point you might hear this seam rip. But I think with a little bit of perseverance and patience and sheer brute force, in all honesty, we'll get it through. Here we go. Right, poke out all your corners. And I must admit, when I first made this bag, well, actually, my daughter showed me how to make this bag. And uh, I was like, well, I really don't get how it works. How can that turn into a bag? But it is quite magic, actually. Because you've got, you, you think, well, hang on a minute, what's going on? But all you do is you simply then tuck your lining inside before I do that, I am just going to top stitch the gap in this lining. Because as a usable bag, you don't want your cosmetics falling through the gap in the hole. You know what it's like when you get a hole in the pocket of your coat and you lose your car keys. Or is that just me? For a neater, more hidden finish, you would just slip stitch this by hand. Then you simply tuck it in like this, 
push it out to the sides and then you've got a lined bag with a fold over flap or you can turn it this way and you have a patterned bag with a quilted lining with a fold over flap just like this. What I've done with these bags is I have top stitched around the flap and just the top of that to stop it rolling but you can press this quite well you know it, it's entirely up to you if you want to top stitch it you could top stitch it with a decorative thread you could even put like a rickrack braid around it you can fit poppers to it you can fit press studs to it what I would recommend though if you're going to do like a velcro fastening is you need to sew your velcro onto your fabric before you start sewing it all together because then that way you don't get the unsightly lines on the inside or on the flap of the bag. So essentially you can make it with any size rectangle you like. I, I find that sort of a, a, a ratio of two wide to three deep is quite nice. So 20 by 30 or 30 by 45 is quite a nice size. Or you can change the ratio completely to make lunch bags and pencil cases. I'll put some templates in the description below so you can make your own. But I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you think that this bag is as magic as I do because say when I first made this I was astounded at how well it turned out. Hope you enjoyed that demonstration. We'll be doing some more sewing for you soon so I hope you join us again. Bye. If you've been inspired to create please share your makes with us in the comments section below and if you've enjoyed videos by the Crafts Channel hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.